Hi, let's talk about Apple, the right to repair movement, and this recent Verge article that came out. Thank you uh, for those who sent it to me to comment on this. Um, here it is. Apple shipped me a 79 pound iPhone repair kit to fix a 1.1 ounce battery. I'm starting to think Apple doesn't want us to repair them. Um, and this is absolutely hilarious. So let's go through it. Sean Hollister um, from The Verge and Apple must be joking. That's how I felt again and again as I jumped through Hoopa after ridiculous hoop to replace the battery in my iPhone mini. Part of that was the repair process. Mostly it was how difficult Apple actually makes it to get there. Last month, Apple launched its uh, self-service repair program, letting US customers fix broken screens, batteries, and cameras, the latest iPhones using Apple's own parts and the tool for the first time ever. I've never successfully repaired a phone, but this time armed with an official repair manual and genuine parts, I'd make it right. That Apple would even let me buy these parts, let alone read its manuals and rent its tools is a major change of pace for the company. For years, yes, of course, Apple has been lobbying against uh, the right to repair movement. Of course, everyone, I think all of my audiences already following Lewis Rossman, but if you're not, of course, he's on the um, leading edge of the uh, right to repair movement. So uh, I'll link in Lewis if you don't know, if you don't know about Lewis. Come on, seriously. Um, but having tried the repair process, I can I actually can't recommend it at all. And as I have a sneaking suspicion that Apple likes it that way. So as it turns out, this article is actually pretty disingenuous and it doesn't really um, show it in the real light. It doesn't explain what the real problems and issues um, are. Anyway, basically what Sean is uh, complaining about is that he ordered, you can actually rent now the uh, official Apple tools for repairing iPhones and they will actually ship, you know, you can rent them for, a, I think it's a week and uh, you have to uh, send them back after that or you can actually buy them. I'll show you this uh, in a minute. But anyway, he's basically having a whinge that to fix his iPhone, sure, you can now get access to the genuine parts, the official Apple repair manual, and the uh, official Apple repair tools to do it. So he rented them, and he's complaining that they came in these huge, two huge Pelican cases like this. And you'll see why in a minute. So he unpacked them all, and here is all of the tools. And it doesn't look fantastic. As you'd expect, these are Apple's you know, proper internal repair tools. They haven't just hastily put these together uh, to satisfy the right to repair movement. These are the tools they actually use in-house at the authorized Apple repair um, centers. And it comes with like the ring bound manual and like and all the tools and the proper presses to put the screens back and everything. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, first of all, you have to actually give Apple credit uh, for doing this. They have actually released all, you know, well, not everything, but they've released, you know, you can actually Actually buy and rent uh, their tools and the official parts and the official service manuals and everything. And I'll link in here's the official uh, press release. It was April uh, 22nd. Genuine Apple parts and tools can now be purchased by US customers. As I said, you can also uh, rent them as well. Anyway, we won't go into that. But basically, uh, they link you over to the Apple self service repair site and you can start with the repair manual. And sure enough, you can actually go in here and here's the manuals, they haven't released the uh, MacBook manuals, but apparently they are uh, coming and other Mac products, I don't know. But um, yeah, at the moment they've, um, so sort of, you know, most of the latest called last, what, two or three gens of iPhones or something, you can get the manuals. And sure enough, here it is, the iPhone 13 Pro repair manual. This is their official in-house repair manual. I'll link it in. It's very comprehensive as you'd expect of any in-house repair manual over you know the size of Apple they've had a team of people actually uh, put these together and they're very impressive and it goes how I don't know how many 81 pages long right and then they've got all the individual part numbers and then all the part numbers for all the tools and everything else right it's incredibly impressive and here's all the stuff you need and I've done like in-house documents like this as well um, at companies I've worked for. And this is, you know, this is what um, companies do for their own in-house. It's even how to unbox the tools and everything. And look at these uh, really professional level uh, repair tools. And this is what you'd expect these companies to actually uh, do. And you can buy these, as I'll show you in a minute, and you can also rent them as well and all the safety concerns and everything. And then how to like replace the screen and replace the battery and replace the uh, camera and all sorts of things. It's not how to troubleshoot to a component level. Um, but, you know, look, it's like, it's, it's serious. This is absolutely fantastic. So you've got to give 
hats off to Apple for actually releasing their in-house manuals for these. I, I can't believe these didn't leak out, actually, um, considering that some of the uh, schematics and other uh, things have leaked out. But this is absolutely brilliant, right? And then sure enough, if you go over to their Apple, um, it's actually selfservicerepair.com. They did a whole domain for it and everything. And they've got, um, here it is. So you can only do the iPhone at the moment and there the model is available. And here's the type of stuff they let you repair. The battery, the bottom speaker, the camera, the display. Um, but you know, if your lightning connector breaks or whatever, I get like you're screwed, I guess, right? So there's only limited um, things that uh, that they actually let you uh, change, right? And so the camera here is, like the camera itself is 111 bucks. These would be uh, Yankee prices, right? Replaced part return credit, what's that? After your repair, return your replaced part to receive credit. That's interesting, I just noticed that. Um, that must be so that they, uh, it, they don't want these parts in the secondhand market. They don't want people to like resell them on eBay or something like that, but why you'd resell it if it's broken? I, I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, you can actually get a credit if you actually return it. Look at that. So they've really gone to town and they've got like their ad a proper like adhesive uh, displays to put the uh, display back on and stuff like that. You can buy like all the individual screws and the little um, cowling that goes over, I don't know, the backing or something for it. Um, so this is this is really impressive. Let's have a look at the display. The display costs 267 bucks. I don't know if this is all good value compared to like aftermarket ones. I assume not right but but the fact that they you can just add these to the cart and then then you can buy them is absolutely fantastic but anyway look at these i'll show you all the like the spudges and the you know the tools and everything and sure enough here's the display press down here they'll sell that to you for 216 bucks i think that's actually really good value and the uh, heated display removal fixture 256 bucks i reckon that's an absolute bargain actually of course you wouldn't buy these if you just joe average and want to fix your phone one off all right of course but if you're running a, like an iphone repair business or something I would totally buy these, right? That's an absolute bargain for like the that call it for 256 bucks. Are you kidding me? I'd buy that in a heartbeat if I was repairing these things. You can go into business fixing um, you know, iPhones and get the, all the original Apple parts and and guides and everything. Fantastic. Hats off. See, now here's the problem, right, with the Verge article is that he's basically complaining that I, I had to rent, he rented all this, right? He's got to send it back after seven days or something. And he had to actually uh, pay a $1,200 deposit to actually rent this thing. And he gets the 1200 bucks back when he ships the, uh, you know, the kit back. And well, you know, uh, fair enough, I guess. Um, but, you know, like, this is not really something to complain about. Like, the individual is not going to rent this kit right for seven days or they're not going to buy it to, to fix their one-off iphone they're just going to take it to a repair center so i think this is a pretty disingenuous uh rant here from the verge it's, it's not the point like you know nobody's going to be dumb enough to rent this kit and pay twelve hundred dollar deposit and fix their iphone that's no and they're still complaining after they admit that Apple would be making a loss on this because Apple will actually pay the uh, postage both ways for these huge Pelican cases. And yeah, that would not be cheap. They offer free shipping in both directions with your $49 rental. So they're complaining that, you know, look, there's no reason to complain. And Apple are taking a loss on this by actually even allowing you to rent these kits. I don't know why Apple even uh, bother doing this, but I think it's actually a pretty good thing that they eat the cost of the shipping on this, and it's only 49 bucks to rent it, even if you do have to put the deposit down. So I, no, no, I, I don't agree that it's worth bashing Apple for that. I expected Apple would send me a small box of screwdrivers, spudges, and pliers. I own my Mini after all. Instead, they giant sent me giant uh, Pelican case and, you know, two Pelican cases, 79 pounds of uh, tools, and all the ring-bound repair manual. Why complain about this? You can't expect a company like Apple to just get, like go, oh yeah, here's some like a couple of hand tools for you, you know, have at it. Um, no, they've actually done this professionally and they've supplied, like they've done it in the absolute most professional way possible. The fact that you actually um, rented this professional level 
repair kit um and you're complaining about it that no it's too professional and no i should have they should have just given me a spudger i can buy for a buck on ebay delivered um and a set of pliers i can also buy for a buck on ebay delivered and they, no come on it's not fair so they're complaining here uh what surprised me was the price tag 69 bucks for a new battery the same price that apple store charges for a battery replacement really i didn't know that it was that cheap um that's actually really good like, if, if Apple are willing to replace the battery in your iPhone, I don't know. Never been to an Apple store in my life. I've got no clue. I've never owned these fruity um, Apple gadgets. Um, but that, that seems like a good deal. So, yeah, writing a whole article bashing Apple about this. Look, I am not a fan of Apple, but, you know, come on. Fair suck of the sav, right? If it's 69 bucks, and he says, except I get to do all the work and assume all the risk. Well, yeah, you're the one who wanted to do it. So, instead of paying the 69 bucks to get it changed at the uh, at the apple store so uh 49 bucks to rent apple's tool for a week yeah that's freaking good they, they're eating the cost of that and making the service available why anyone would want to actually do it um i i don't know but geez you can't complain about it seriously and he's complaining about the 1200 dollar credit card hold which would forfeit if the tools won't return within seven days well i i reckon that's fair let's be clear this is a ridiculous amount to risk for the average person who just wants a new battery to put in their phone um yeah it, of course that's why nobody is going to do this and this is not really what right to repair what the fundamental issues with right to repair are i mean it's fantastic that apple now let you get that just download it from their website here it is here's the link just download it you don't even have to have an account i've got no uh, boom there it is right there's their full 80 page repair manual absolutely fantastic right and you can buy the tools and the original parts right absolutely fantastic sure it's not all of them um but come on you've got to give apple credit for like at, at least making these parts available and then he's complaining about that he, you know, went through the steps and repaired it all and everything. And then he, uh, you know, put the screen back on with the adhesive and the whole lot by the looks of it. And then it didn't power up. Then he's complaining that Apple gave me no way to test whether the battery and display connectors were actually seated. They probably weren't. And had me close up the phone anyhow. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's an issue in the manual or something like that. But of course, you obviously test it before you go to the effort to seal the whole phone up again surely you can like power it up with the screen dangling off or something can't you i mean yeah i i don't know this is not a fair suck of the serve but this here is probably fair criticism the single most frustrating part of this process after using the genuine parts genuine tools was that the iphone didn't recognize the battery the genuine battery as genuine unknown part flashed a warning apparently that's the case for almost all of these parts you're expected to dial up apple's third-party logistics company after the repair so that they can validate the part for you uh, the process involves having an entirely separate computer and wi-fi connection since you have to reboot your iphone in the diagnostics mode and give the company remote control really um yeah that 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 is an absolute joke come on apple so let's get into the issues with uh, the right to repair and apple in particular well obviously that's one of them right I, I i can't verify this myself but if that's true then that's yeah that's just dumb but the problem with apple and right to repair and you'll hear this from lewis rossman all the time is that the biggest problem is that they don't make board level component repair easy in fact apple in the past have tried to um you know legally strong arm him um not into actually releasing videos of how to uh do it so a they don't release schematics b they um actually have uh no sell agreements with a lot of the uh silicon manufacturers i believe like ti or somebody i can't name the exact art ones but uh, lewis does in his videos but there are companies who manufacture in specifically like the charger chips in macbooks and things like that was what lewis complains about all the time they have no sell agreements for these parts where you cannot buy them on digikey mouse or anywhere you cannot buy it from the manufacturer from any distributor whatsoever they only sell the chip exclusively to apple and that's one of the major problems they can't even get the parts that's why uh repair centers like uh, lewis rossman have to uh, like strip old boards like take parts off old boards and things and put them in and 
The third issue is um, component serialization. Like they said down here, you can't even put in, the, in this case, the genuine battery. You try putting in a, I don't know, a third party battery or something like that. But I'm hearing that a lot of these components like the third party camera modules and all sorts of things are individually serialized. And even if you take a, a genuine one out of another iPhone, for example, and put it in, a, and put it in your iPhone, like you buy it on eBay, it's a genuine part, it came out of a junked iPhone because somebody, I don't know, destroyed the thing, and you go to put it in yours, it won't work because of uh, individual component serialization. The firmware checks the serial number and goes, uh-uh, we don't want any part of that, this is a non-genuine part, bugger off. And yes, of course, we can also talk about, well, they should design these products so that they're actually repairable, the batteries are replaceable, and the connectors are, you know, everything's sort of like modular or replaceable and all that sort of stuff. That is not the argument, because A, they have to design new products to do that, and B, well, it's the consumers that actually demand all these, you know, sleeky, wanky, waterproof, bloody uh, phones and everything that have to be all glued, shut, sealed, and everything else. So, you know, I, I can understand the argument, and I'm all for it, you know, but people need to demand these sort of things. They have to stop buying these fruity Apple gadgets if they're hard to repair. So these are the three major things that Apple and other manufacturers have to do if they're serious about right to repair in consumer products like this. I mean, but seriously, like, hats off for Apple actually releasing all of this stuff and being able to buy what, what I think is, and these are incredible prices. These are amazingly low prices for these genuine uh, tools, right? So, uh, you know, you could argue, yeah, their display might be a bit expensive at, 100, at 260 bucks and stuff like that. And I think uh, Lewis has talked about um, in the past, like the display, the LCD itself, like if you just crack the LCD, you have to replace like the entire assembly or something like that. Um, so they're, you know, they're, and they're only selling like a few parts at the moment, like I said, but if you bust like the connect in the thing then well you've got to like really get down to like board level uh, repair and especially if you've got a failed chip or something like that I don't know how often like chips in individual iPhones uh, fail but even MacBooks are for example Lewis has got a whole uh, business you know with a dozen employees or more dedicated just to fixing MacBooks um, because of the and the chips just fail in them with monotonous regularity but of course you wouldn't expect Apple to like for, for their MacBooks uh, once they have some things available for them to have like individual charger chips and stuff like that. I think that's asking too much of any company, but the at least they can do is to get rid, scrap those no sell agreements with the uh, semiconductor manufacturers so that they can just make them available on DigiKey or Mouser and other uh, suppliers available on the free market so that you can just buy them. You know, if you're a repair business, you buy a stock of, you know, a hundred of those ch charger chips because you know they, you know, fail. And then you've got all, you know, stock of all the major parts uh, that fail on hand and scrap the serialization of bullshit. There's absolutely no reason to do it. And especially um, when Apple have basically said, look, you can go and repair your own iPhone now, right? Here's all the stuff to do it. Here's all the info. Here's all the official guide and everything. And obviously, right, I assume there's some clause in there that you void your warranty and everything else, right? And that's fine and dandy. Everyone understands that. And so they're allowing uh, you to do this now. In fact, in even encouraging you uh, to repair your own Apple fruity gadget. And so therefore, just like scrap all the other bullshit about security and genuine parts and everything else. If people want to repair them, then they should be able to use any third-party part without restriction. They should be able to use genuine parts and, and swap them between devices, and they should be able to buy the semiconductor devices, and they should be able to get the schematics, and don't give me that BS about, uh, you know, oh, company will just, you know, clone the Apple uh, product because they've got the schematics now. Uh -uh. That's not how it works. Just release the schematics and the board uh, information available in uh, Paul Daniels' board view software so that any repair shop can just get his um, software and then just load in the uh, genuine files and then troubleshoot to a component level if they want to. And then the individual customers have the choice. If you want the genuine Apple experience, you go into your Apple fruity store and you pay your thousand bucks to get whatever fixed, okay? And Or you can go to your local uh, repair center, authorized or not, and they will have access to a good lot of the genuine parts and also third-party parts. And then the user has the choice whether or not they want to uh, you know, risk having, like, you know, using, oh, risk, oh, scary, uh, third-party, um, you know, screen or something uh, like that for a lower 
cost. And like, seriously, I don't know why Apple don't do this. It's a no-brainer. But seriously, um, this Verge article just, no, no, it sucks. It totally missed the mark. Um, <laughs> it's like, no. But hey, it's the Verge, you know. Anyway, <laughs> leave your thoughts and comments down below. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.